the Chairwoman Global Women Peace Initiative, Anya Hasera. I think that's the greeting in Korea. <laughs> <It's not listening. laughs> and um, Your Excellency Hajia Aishaba Bengida, one of our facilitators. Our mother from Kenya, who has been here since yesterday and acting actively in our discussions. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am highly honored to be here again and to welcome you to this gathering and discuss and to discuss issues related to my special constituency, which is women. Let me start by expressing my sincere appreciation to the organizers of this important conference, particularly the Global Peace Foundation in partnership with the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution. Peace, as you know, is a very important issue that we must all consciously promote. This is because it is the most essential factor for development. Where there is no peace, there will be no development, no sustainable development. As such, the maintenance of peace and stability remains the collective responsibility and desire of all people. A review of conflict situations on the African continent in the past five years shows that the role of African women in, up, in peace upkeeping of the family as wives and mothers holds the key for breaking the vicious cycle of conflict and poverty, thereby serving as catalysts for peace and development in Africa. I believe, therefore, our convergence here at this particular session is to further voice out, aggregate and exhibit the virtuous role, virtuous role that women can play and should play as major stakeholders in the society in the prevention, management and resolution of conflict, as well as post-conflict reconstruction process in timely and most appropriate places. The theme of this session, Role of Women in Peace Building, implies that there is a, a responsibility expected from women in the mitigation of the various conflicts that presently plague and challenge the peace and development of our dear nation, Nigeria and the world at large. Indeed, Women have a role to play in conflict prevention, resolution, and sustenance. This is as a result of their innate peacemaking qualities as women and mothers. Their biological constitution and socialization makes them to be more patient, tolerant, and resilient. They are social bridges which which by reasons of marriage, relationships, or children bearing, have acquired families across cultures, thereby promoting ethnic, religious, political, and cultural integration. They are usually the prime victims of violence and conflicts, suffering as a consequence untold hardships when they lose their husbands, their brothers, or their sons. The role of women have played in peace building, the role women have played in peace building over the years has shown that they can hold together the social fabric and act as the peace catalyst. Women at all levels and across all sectors form strategic alliances and operational networks, networks to promote peace. Prominent among these networks our African First Lady's Peace Mission. The First Lady, our mother, is the president of that mission. Her Excellency, the impatient Jonathan, plays a key leadership role within the African continent, within the civil society sector, 
We have the Minor River Union Women's Peace Building Network, MAPRONET. We have West Africa Women Network for Peace Building, WIPNET, which played a comprehensive prevention diplomacy in Liberia and Sierra Leone Wars, and eventually took prominent stage in the preparation and signing of a Kasombo Peace Agreement that returned Liberia back to safety and peace. Such efforts met global recognition, including Nobel Peace Award, to two figures of that network, one of which is Dr. Ellen Jolin Saleh as president, and Lema Bowie still as peace activist. Everywhere in Africa, the contributions of women in peace process are significant, and this has been largely documented. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am not here to render a full account of the role of women because our resource persons have done justice to their papers. I want to commend them for their efforts and contributions. I hope we'll go back home to Ireland community and initiate or implement what we have learned here today. As women, we have the faces of peace, we believe in peace, and we should be seen to be advocates of peace, and we should be seen to be implementing that peace. We should not continue to talk, but to walk the talk. It is therefore my singular honor and privilege at this juncture to formally launch the Global Peace Woman Nigeria. I want to solicit, thank you, I want to solicit your support to take this process forward. Being, oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to solicit your support here to take this process forward, being the Nigerian initiative to start the homework for a more proactive women's movement that can immediately intervene in conflicts across the nation. We are faced with so many problems, insecurity and conflicts, be it cultural, tradition, religious, there are so many. We hope we'll continue to set the pace. They must build the capacity of women. We must build the capacity of women to form vanguards of communal peace so that they can detect early signs of breaches of peace before they erupt in conflicts. We are all mothers. We have the ability to sense violence. We should keep our eyes on the community. We must be seen to resolve better practices in addressing poverty, for there is no better tool in peace building than the welfare of the people. As the saying goes, poverty has the face of a woman. <laughs> and when there's poverty in the heart of the woman or in the home of the woman, the children are directly affected. And nothing can be achieved with poverty. There's no proper health, there's no proper feeding, and the end, because education being the important tool and the most important tool to develop and empower an individual, then you find out that the family is in a serious problem. And when the youth are unemployed, you will find that, that they will be successful, uh, success, uh, they'll be accessible anytime, they will be employed by all sorts of people that we want to misuse them, and then they will not be useful to themselves or to the society. So I think we should do our best to support each other, to empower each other, so that we can achieve our full potentials. We should be seen to start advocacy on the immediate mainstreaming of youths through youth employment, programs and engagement, just like I have said they should mobilize both formal and informal women groups to become the conscience of the nation, thereby becoming the promoters of ethics, values, and norms 
as well as respect for the different cultures and religion. We have been created by Almighty Allah in different colors, height, tribes, religion, into different nations. And he said for the purpose for that was for us to understand each other. I hope when we come together, we discuss our differences, we, we respect each other, and then we'll be able to accommodate each other and understand each other more. As I end my remarks, I am confident that with the active participation of women in peace building, we shall be able to achieve our collective aspiration of instituting lasting peace in our country, Nigeria, the continent, our continent Africa, and the world at large. I will depart with these words of Martin Luther King Jr. Peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal. And again, just as Robert Fulham also said, peace is not something you wish for. It is something you make, something you do, some you are, and something you give away. Distinguished girls, I thank you most sincerely for your attention, and I wish you all happy deliberations, and I wish us success over the launching of the Global Peace Women Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs>